Welcome back to another Mech Tech Tech. Today, and for the next installation, we have upgrade guides for the Doctor Who pre-cons. We're teaming up with a fourth Doctor, and Sarah Jane Smith, who are passing out clues and food, letting us cast the sword spells off the top of our library, all that good jazz. But before we dive on in, I notice that most of you still aren't subscribed to the channel. Go ahead and tap that subscribe button and ring that bell to ensure that you never miss an episode and maybe even earn yourself a little shout-out in one of our videos. Speaking of which, today's episode is dedicated to DI Records and their founder, Dakota. DI Records is an independent record label with an emphasis on quality music, mental health, and suicide prevention. There's a link in the description down below for you to check out all the awesome work that they do. DI Records, you rock! Our focus today is creating those lovely artifact tokens for value and casting our historic spells for card advantage. Of course, this is our standard upgrade guide, so 10 cards just didn't quite make the cut. Let's take a look at which ones those are. Banished to Another Universe tops the list, and those of you that are familiar with my upgrade guides definitely saw this one coming. Not a fan of these exile until this leaves the battlefield type of effects. You know, the fact that it's potentially has a low, low cost of one mana is nice, but still not nice enough for me to want to play it. But, you know, what are your guys' thoughts on these effects? Are they strong enough that I'm like... I'm kind of throwing them a little bit too much shade, they should get to stay every once in a while? Let me know down below. Barbara Wright follows up that banishment and allows your sagas to start further ahead. And while we do have a handful of sagas in the deck, this isn't really a saga-focused deck. That being said, she'd fit into one perfectly, but just not here. So Barbara, you gotta go. You're out of here. See ya. Sayonara. Bessie, the Doctor's Road is up next and feels like we're committing a few too many resources to make a single creature unblockable. Sure, our Doctor is a 4-4, but we don't really have a ton of ways of buffing them specifically. There are a few other creatures in the deck who can really pack an unblockable punch, but it's not really the direction that we're trying to go. The War Doctor might find better use for this roadster. Joe Grant has an odd ability, allowing us to cycle away our historic spells, but I don't think we have enough graveyard recursion to synergize with her. I think she'd really shine in a more cycle-focused deck. Uh, though the one that I'd like to build isn't mono-white, so she couldn't be the commander in it, but she don't belong here. Sergeant John Benton follows up our cyclist who cycles. He's a trample hasty 2-4. And whenever he deals combat damage to a player, you and that player each draw that many cards. You know, this is very similar to the Wedding Ring that I cut from a previous deck. You know, I just don't like pushing our opponents ahead, and like the two damage is really insignificant. You know, if we were playing a Monarch style thing, I could see maybe trying to cut those kind of deals where it's like, oh, let me take the Monarch back, I'll let you draw some cards, you're still going to get some value. But in this deck, I just don't think he belongs. Susan Foreman is up next, and is an alright mana dork that cares about planeswalking. If we aren't playing that format, I think there are just better mana dorks out there. And so, Susan, you could just kind of go. The Caves of Androzani. Androzani! The Caves of Androzani follows Susan, and it cares about stunning some creatures, looking for sagas, and finally letting us tutor up a doctor. I really don't feel like we have enough sagas to bother including this, but it would do nicely in a saga-focused deck that also happened to feature a doctor or two to kind of tutor up, get the full value. Another saga that didn't quite make that cut is The Curse of Fennec. Wipes out a creature per player, including us, then it removes a threat, but only kind of, because it turns that threat into a 6-6. And then finally removes that threat, as well as one of the, um, the mutants that we passed out via a forced fight. It's a little convoluted, it's a little slow for what's trying to accomplish, and I just think we have better removal in the deck. The last saga that didn't make the cut is the Sea Devils. This saga creates some island walking salamanders, lets them, you know, deal some extra damage to a creature, really just on that one turn. Uh, so not really great. If we were more focused on token creatures or had a way to kind of give them death touch or even just like recur the saga, I think it would have potential, but in the deck as it is now, that's just really not the case. 
The last card that didn't make the cut is the Second Doctor. He offers up card draw in exchange for not being attacked. I've gotten some flack for cutting Wedding Ring from a different deck, and though this card is more group hug than that one, so there is some differences, I can still see myself being set up for a little bit of critiques here. But I really don't like the idea of pushing our opponents ahead. If you want to build group hug decks, he's probably great for it. But that's not the kind of decks that I personally build. Card advantage is king, and why would I be giving out crowns to all of my opponents? With those cards out of the way, how are we going to improve this deck? Teleportation Circle starts off our list and lets us reuse our mana rocks and abuse some of the handful of ETB triggers some of our other creatures have, including one of the powerful combo pieces that could see us gain massive advantage over the other players at the table. Michiko's Reign of Truth follows up that circle and boosts a creature of our choice two turns in a row. Could be different creatures, could be the same one. And then comes back as a powerhouse themselves with plus one, plus one for each artifact and enchantment we have. And with us creating all these clues and foods, they should be a brick house. The last enchantment that we're adding to the deck is Battle for Bretgard. It's going to give us four creatures in total, some extra clues, some extra food to boot, uh, you know, there are definitely a few other creature tokens and artifact tokens that we're going to create throughout the deck. Uh, we're going to get extra copies of those as well. Moving into artifacts, we only actually have one new addition to the deck in the form of Tamiyo's Journal. With how often we're creating clues, being able to sack three to tutor up any card we want is powerful. We'll always be able to find an answer to the current board state this way. And I think for, you know, the 279 that it costs, it's an excellent addition. Moving right past our instants and sorceries, we have new creatures to go over, and many of them are part of powerful combos. Tireless Tracker and Tireless Provisioner are here to give us more artifact tokens for simply playing our lands. The Tracker is offering up clues, which when sacked will boost their stats, while the Provisioner offers us either food or treasure, we get to have our choice. More often than not, I think we're going to take the treasure over the food. Of course, we can turn these half-decent effects into powerful combos with... ba ba da ba Kodama the East Tree and a Bounce Land. Though truthfully, a handful of regular non-bounce lands will also work. Uh, but, you know, we're going for those infinite clues, food, treasures, allowing us to play out our entire deck, have infinite life. Um, you know, just really go into Value Town. Population us. Following up our Deadly Trio is Martha Jones, who we've borrowed from another Doctor. She'll offer up a clue on ETB, but more importantly, allows us to become unblockable, slipping past defenses, and with the right cards in place, knocking opponents out of the game before they even knew what happened to them. After Martha, we've got Briar Bridge Patrol, who could help us cheat out some of our creatures, and works well as a blocker. Only a few of our creatures are truly expensive, costing 5 or more mana to cast, but why pay for them when we could cheat them out? Also, they just act as a really good source of generating clues for us, you know, chump blocking things all day. Last up, it's the golden nightmare of the deck. Academy. Manufactor. Uh, but this assembly worker that could is going to give us a ton of value, offering up clues, food, and treasures when we would create only one of them. Again, riding straight off to Value Town and popping off hard. Of course, this deck is a budget upgrade, right? We're not out here spending ludicrous amounts of money. And for that reason, there are a couple cards that didn't quite make the cut. So we do have our honorable mentions. Sitting at $33 is just too expensive to add and keep the rest of the cards that we kind of wanted to see in here, in here. Uh, but that's Mondrak Glory Dominus. You know, she'll be doubling up tokens and whatnot, and those are great. Another instance of if you have the card already, or if, like, you have the money, you know, money's not really a big deal to you, definitely pick it up for this deck. Token doubling effects are definitely a strong way to go, and we're going to see that with some of our other honorable mentions, including both doubling season and parallel lives. You know, they're sitting at 30 bucks and $43 to pick these up, right? They're just too expensive to be in a budget deck, but if you have the money or you have the cards already, by all means, take them. 
The same can't be said for the last honorable mention, but I thought it was a little niche, but no less near and dear to my heart. Thorough investigation gives us clues for attacking, and when we sack those clues, we get to venture into a dungeon. The Lost Mines of Fandover is like my personal dungeon of choice. I have an infinite dungeon deck that lets me just sort of cycle through it real quick. Uh, but, you know, tons of value in the form of treasures, which we care about, card draw, a little bit of damage, a little bit of scrying to help us, like, cycle through our deck. Uh, but all the dungeons are honestly pretty good. I think Throw Investigation could be a solid choice if you're down to, like, dabble in a little, little off-brand stuff, you know what I mean? But guys, that's the upgrade guide, where there are cards that I cut that you think should have stayed. Cards I added that you think, you know, those don't really belong in there. Uh, there are no doctors left, but we have some villainous choices to look forward to next time. Uh, but let me know in the comments section down below any, you know, thoughts you have on it. And as always, if you want some help with your own decks or just a sling spells with me over on Spell Table, consider joining the Discord. And until next time, good luck with your builds.